So this is going to be a short collection of thoughts and a very casual review of a game called The Dream Machine. I just finished a full blind playthrough of the game on my channel, so please check that out before watching this. I thought on top of making Let's Plays it would be a fun idea to share some thoughts of the games I have finished to give a nice ending to each series. I'm not an experienced video game reviewer and I don't pretend to be. These are just personal thoughts I have now after playing through the game. Basically I'm just reading a work document that has a wall of rambling that I, for the purpose of this video, tried to form into coherent sentences. Now, obviously, very heavy spoilers ahead, so please be careful. I don't remember how I came across this game, but I do remember why it caught my eye. It looked so creepy, so weird, nothing like I'd ever seen in a video game before. To me, it looked beautiful. I'm like the perfect audience for this type of a game. I'm really into stuff that has this certain type of an atmosphere and aesthetic that many would maybe refer to as unsettling, even disturbing. I was definitely charmed by the art style, the fact that it was made almost completely by hand. I thought the Wikipedia description for the game was funny, how it listed all these random items that were used in the making, like for example cotton wads, pebbles, baking paper, pipe cleaners, broccoli, ground coffee, pork chop trimmings, condoms, ping pong balls, small plastic babies, matchsticks, aluminum foil, jam, pasta, bones and popsicles. It is incredible to think how much time and effort it took just to gather all these items. You really have to have an eye for that stuff. Walking around the store and seeing a normal item and thinking, hey, I'm gonna turn that into a prop in my fantasy world. The creators of the game have actually some live streams they did back when making the game, and I watched bits and pieces of those, and it's just so cool to get a little glimpse into the making of this unique game. The art style is impressive, and I also believe that the story holds up to it. In fact, I think it's a perfect story to tell this way. Just hearing someone say that they're going to create a dream world with clay and cardboard, well, I'm interested. Dreams are after all just a brain processing your life and the things that have happened or the things that you, maybe even unconsciously, are struggling with. At least that's what I believe, I'm very much into analyzing dreams anyway. That again is probably another reason why I'm just the right person to play this game. But it makes sense that the normal items like broccoli and ping pong balls would get another part to play in the dreams. The game definitely had me from the start, but I think the first and second chapter were needlessly split into two. Since the game is called The Dream Machine, I think it would have been smart to introduce the machine in the first chapter already. Even though it is quite short, the first chapter is slow, also taking into account that it's a point and click puzzle game, so it might take a while to find all the necessary items to solve the puzzles. And honestly, story-wise not much happens, except discovering the camera. Now, that's very mysterious, but I fear it's not big enough of a plot point for people who are just trying out the game to be interested to continue on. Luckily, in the second chapter the machine is discovered almost immediately and you actually get to go into the dream world, which is something everyone who turned the game on was probably waiting to do. The third chapter was the most challenging one for me, I was really struggling with those puzzles. It could be because the game was still very much in the beginning, considering the first two chapters were so short, and I hadn't gotten very used to how the world works and how to go about solving the puzzles. I still don't understand how the radio puzzle is supposed to be actually solved. I ended up solving it by accident. The story takes an extremely grim turn in the end of the chapter. I mean, so far you had just been walking around this pretty comfy cruise ship, and suddenly you are standing knee-deep in decomposing corpses. I knew something bad was happening on that ship, but I would have never guessed that's how the chapter was gonna end. This was when the game took a big turn from just creepiness to full-on gore. <laughs> To me it was a bit of a shock, not in a bad way, I'm not sensitive to that type of stuff really, but I can definitely see someone being quite upset with that. After that scene in the coal room I was thinking, okay there's no way this game is gonna get even more graphic. But it did, in a very different way though. 
After finishing one of the later episodes, I went to my partner and described to him what I had just went through in the game. It went something like this. Yeah, so I shrinked my body, climbed up a bed, walked into my mother's bloody vagina, cause, you know, she's been struggling giving birth for a while, uh, then I journeyed into the womb and met a little fetus version of me who I had a nice little chat with. That was a sentence I thought I'd never utter. The game I think peaks at the fifth chapter, which I think is without argument the best chapter of the game. It's the lengthiest, but with good reason. It is genius how these two dreams, Mr. Willard and Miss Thedes, are intertwined and you get kind of an open world to solve things. That was a little overwhelming at first, just walking around in that fantasy forest wondering when I'm gonna reach the end of the map. I'm thankful I unintentionally chose to do the dreams in the smartest order, you know, starting with Mr. Willard's dream and shutting off the monitors, so then I could just proceed easily with Miss Thede's dream. And by this far I had gotten pretty used to how the world works, so I think I did really well in this chapter. Things went quite smoothly, I have to say. I talked a little bit about the final chapter already, about the most memorable scene, but I want to mention a few other things that I really enjoyed about it. I think it was smart that the final big puzzle was the same as back in the second chapter, the one where you trace back the Mortons so you get to Felix. You got to use the things you learned throughout the game. You literally went back into the dreams you had already visited to solve the final one. When my partner was playing for the first time one of my favorite games of all time, Zelda Twilight Princess, spoilers ahead for that by the way, but also I mean kind of not because it's a Zelda game and like all of them end the same way by fighting Ganondorf. Anyway, one of his biggest complaints about the final boss fight was that in the end it was just a sword fight with the main bad guy. You didn't get to utilize any of the myriad of items you had acquired throughout the game. I know these two games are very different, but that criticism of the ending battle of Twilight Princess made me really think about the ending of the Dream Machine and appreciate how you got to do exactly that, to use everything you had learned before. Changing the order of the rooms by moving the paintings on a wall, tracing back the generations, shrinking yourself to fit into smaller places, and even the acorn pulling technique. To me, that was very satisfactory, it made me feel like what I had learned before truly mattered. About the very ending, chapter 7, it's technically just a cutscene. You don't really do anything, you don't choose any dialogue options, you don't use any items, you just walk. You don't even get to make a final decision, either letting the baby be born with the machine inhabiting it, or killing the child and the machine with it. I guess it would have been cool if there were different endings to the game, but in the end I think the creators didn't want the game to have a sad ending. I mean, both of those options are horrible. Either your child becomes a zombie or your child dies. The game decides for you, without doubt, the best decision. The machine will join with Victor's consciousness, thus saving the child completely. It's a bittersweet ending since Victor is unable to wake up anymore nor have a relationship with the child, but if given those three options, this would have been the one that I had chosen. So I have no qualms about the game making the decision for me. The Dream Machine is a beautiful story of a doubtful father's journey through the whimsical world of dreams, in the end sacrificing his life for his unborn child. The main themes of the game are parenthood and family, and I was very touched by how those were handled. Imagine giving up your life for someone you've never even met. Victor was not sure about parenthood, but in the end I think his child was very lucky to have a father like that, someone who would be prepared to do anything for them whoever they might become when they grow up, or in this case, when they are born. That's it for my thoughts about the Dream Machine. I hope you enjoyed this little video and join me in the future for other crazy and weird adventures. Thank you so much for watching.